स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया at the very heart of uh, the study of real analysis lies the notion of differentiability and integration and these two notions are tied together by the very beautiful fundamental theorem of calculus complex analysis also the things are quite similar at the very heart of the study of complex analysis the notion of complex differentiability and complex line integrals lie and they are also tied together by a uh, variant of the fundamental theorem of calculus there is a further variant of this fundamental theorem called the cauchy's theorem which lends certain amount of rigidity to complex differentiable functions thereby making the theory very beautiful in this lecture we will define complex differentiability and explore some of its properties so let us begin by recalling the notion of differentiability over the real numbers so recall recall that a function f from u to r is said to be differentiable at a point Oh, so what is u? Uh, u contained in R at a point x naught in u. If uh, x naught is an interior point of u, and the following limit exists, and limit x going to x naught. and x in u minus x not of f of x minus f of x not by x minus x not exists if this limit exists we say that a function f a real valued function f defined on u is differentiable at the point x not we then say that uh, okay let's denote this the the limit is denoted by f prime at x0 and f prime of x0 is said to be the derivative of f at x0 which is called the derivative of f at x0 and if f happens to be uh, differentiable at every point x uh, in u then we say that f is differentiable on u let us somehow mimic this definition let us adapt this definition to the complex variable setting we are going to be defining complex differentiability very similarly so complex differentiability so let omega be a subset of c and f be a map from omega into c let's consider a complex valued function on omega we say that f is complex different i'm going to adapt the definition verbatim in fact by making the relevant changes we say that f is complex differentiable at a point z0 in omega if z0 is an interior point and the following limit exists and limit z going to z0 
where z is in omega minus z naught if this uh, okay which limit f of z minus f of z naught by z minus z naught exists if this limit exists then we say that f is complex differentiable at the point z naught the limit is denoted by f prime at z naught or as df by dz at z naught. So no, remember that f prime at z naught is a complex number or df by dz at z naught is a complex number. And if f is differentiable or rather complex differentiable, I should be very careful. If f is complex differentiable at every point z naught uh, at every point z in omega then we say that f is holomorphic on omega we say that f is let me uh, say complex differentiable on omega or holomorphic on omega i will slowly start using that word holomorphic on omega or holomorphic on omega There are variants of this particular definition. Uh, the first definition, the first variant would be an epsilon delta variant. So, how do we capture that? Uh, we say that f is differential, complex differentiable at z naught if there exists a complex number f prime at z naught. in C such that absolute given epsilon positive and given epsilon positive there exists delta positive such that the disk of radius z naught sorry disk of radius delta around z naught is contained in omega and absolute value of f of z minus f of z naught by z minus z naught minus f prime of z naught is less than epsilon whenever 0 is less than mod of z minus z naught is less than delta. If you notice carefully we have just rewritten the definition above uh, in the epsilon delta setting which you will be familiar with. So another variant of the definition is uh, using is in, in terms of uh, approximate linearization. Uh, we say that f is complex differentiable at z naught. So the setting is the same. I'm not writing the setting again and again. F is a complex valued function from omega into uh, c, and z naught is some interior point in omega. <coughs> f is complex differentiable at z naught if there exists a complex number if there exists f prime at z, uh, z naught in c uh, and e of okay such that f of z e is equal to f of z naught plus f prime at z naught times z minus z naught plus o of small o of z minus z naught where small o of z minus z naught is equal to z minus z naught times e of z where e of z goes to 0 as z goes to z naught. So notice that the limit is being taken along any complex uh, any any sequence of complex numbers converging to z naught so this is uh, very similar to how we had defined the differentiability on the real line and some of the consequences there immediately carry forward here as well so for example if a function is complex differentiable at a point z naught then the function is necessarily continuous let me make that uh, observation 
uh, maybe a lemma if f from omega to c is complex differentiable at omega contained in c at the point z0 in omega then f is continuous at omega at, at z0 the proof is immediate because uh, if you write down the uh, linearization uh, approximate linearization here for example what do we have we have f of z minus f of z0 is f prime of z0 times z minus z0 plus o of z minus z0 and we know that as z goes to z0 o of z minus z0 goes to 0 <coughs> and f prime of z0 is fixed therefore f of z minus f of z0 goes to 0 as z goes to z0 and therefore f has to be continuous at z0 so let me not write down a proof of this it's just the same proof as in uh, the real variable setting uh, one variable uh, real differentiable functions in fact in the complex setting we get far higher regularity but we will come to that later let us not worry about it yet. <clears throat> let us now look at uh, an example. Let f uh, of z be equal to z to the power n be defined on the complex plane omega here in this case is the entire complex plane. The function is quite straightforward, it is f of z is equal to z to the power n. And let us see if it is complex differentiable at a given point, fix z0 in C and let us see what is going to be f of z minus for z0 equal to z0. We have f of z minus f of z0 by z minus z0 is equal to z to the power n minus z naught to the power n by z minus z naught. Uh, geometric series actually you should check, sit down and check that this is exactly equal to z to the power n minus 1 times z naught z to the power n minus 1 plus z to the power n minus 1 times z0, n minus 2 times z0 plus up to z to the power n minus 1. This is precisely the geometric series which you can you can check this inductively if you want, if you are not convinced. You can prove this inductively that z, z to the power n minus z0 to the power n by z minus z0 is exactly equal to this. Now, if you take limit as z goes to z0, then this is going to be the limit of this which is going to be z0 to the power n minus 1 plus z0 to the power n minus 1 plus up to z0 to the power n minus 1 and each of this is contributing once there are n terms and hence this is equal to n times z0 to the power n minus 1. So, as is to be expected. Uh, the the derivative the complex derivative of z to the power n uh, turns out to be n times z to the power n minus uh, z uh, at a point z naught turns out to be n times z naught to the power n minus one. So as is to be expected, the uh, laws of calculus they actually carry forward to complex differentiable functions as well. For example, the uh, linearity property is satisfied if you look at uh, so let me write that down the laws of calculus are satisfied so for example the same proof actually goes through uh, if f comma g are functions from omega contained in c to c uh, are complex differentiable at a point z naught then so is f plus g with derivative with complex derivative f prime at z0 plus g prime at z0 
uh, this is the additive property if c belongs to omega oh, sorry if c is some complex number and uh, if we consider c times f then c times f is also complex differentiable at z naught and c times f the derivative of this at z naught is just going to be c times f prime at z naught so the proof is exactly similar to the way we prove it in the real variable setting so i would uh, refer you to a a, a proof uh, in say for example principles of mathematical analysis rudin and uh, i'll request you to sit down and give a very similar proof in this complex variables setting as well it should go through very similar proofs should go through well not just the uh, linearity property the product rule also holds uh, if f and g are maps from omega to omega b again some subset of c into c b complex differentiable at a point z not in omega then f g is complex differentiable at z not with derivative f prime at z not times g prime uh, g at z not the usual leibniz rule plus g prime at z not times f of z not so the usual product rule this is called the product rule right i'll call the product the same thing here the first one was linearity right if you have a function which is complex differentiable at a point z not and sub such that g is not vanishing there okay quotient rule again i'll leave the proof to you it's ex exactly similar to the real variable setting if g if f is uh, if both f and g from omega contained in c two complex numbers be complex differentiable at a point z not at z not in omega suppose both f and g are complex differentiable at uh, z not and suppose uh g does not vanish at z not then by continuity of g g does not vanish in a neighborhood of z not right then by continuity g does not vanish in a neighborhood Uh, d of z not then f by g is complex differentiable at the point z not in d is complex differentiable at z not so slowly i will uh, stress upon the fact that the complex difference complex differentiable complex differentiability is a local property and therefore when i talk about complex differentiability at x not when x not is thought of as a point in d or whether it is thought of as uh, being complex differentiable at x not when with x not as a point in omega the difference is uh, uh, there is no difference it's the same the idea of complex differentiability is a local property at a given particular point and the quotient rule also tells us that f by g prime at x not is exactly equal to f prime at at the point so i should not be using x not here because i have taken the point z not above right so the point here was z not so let me again use z not here f by g prime at z not is f prime at z not times g of z not minus g prime of z not times f of z not by g of z not square
this is the product code again the proof is going to be similar there and uh, finally let me also talk about the chain rule the chain rule is what does the chain rule say if you have f a function from omega into c and suppose v is a function from sorry g is a function from v to c such that v is sitting inside the uh, is inside the image of uh, f then if you consider g composed with f and look at the derivative then this is going to be g prime at f of uh, x naught times f prime at x naught that is the statement in the real, va real variable setting we will be able to say a similar statement in the complex variable setting as well so let f be a map from omega into c and be complex differentiable at a point z0 be complex differentiable at z0 in omega and uh, suppose g is a function suppose g is a function from say uh, d into c uh, such that g is complex differentiable at f of z0 at f of z0 f of omega is contained in d let's put this extra condition it's a local property if needed we could shrink our uh, omega to the small neighborhood where we are looking at the complex differentiability and we can still uh, realize the chain rule the way we need it so suppose this condition is also there then g composed with f is complex differentiable at Z0. And further, G composed with F prime at Z0 is equal to as is to be expected G prime at F of Z0 times F prime at Z0. Yeah, let me not uh, skip the proof of this. I have been skipping the proof of all the uh, elementary statements. Maybe I should give a proof of this. So the fact that f is complex differentiable at the point z0 tells us that uh, f of z is equal to f of z0 plus z minus z0 times f prime at z0 plus o of z minus z0 which is just z minus z0 times e1 of z where e1 of z goes to 0 as z goes to z0 and the fact that g is complex differentiable at f of z0 so let f of z0 let's call it some name let w0 be equal to f of z0 so we are saying that g is complex differentiable at w0 and this is because f is complex differentiable at z0 there x is f prime at z0 and e1 of z such that this happens. Similarly, since g is complex differentiable at w0, there x is a number g prime at w0 complex number and a function e2 of w such that g of w minus g of w naught or g of w is equal to g of w naught plus w minus w naught times g prime at w naught plus w minus w naught times e2 of w where e2 of w goes to 0 as w goes to w naught. Now let us approach w naught through f of z where z is a sequence so since f is con uh, differential complex differentiable at z0 it's also continuous at z0 and hence uh, zn uh, z if Hence, f of z converges to w0 whenever z converges to z0. So, 
let us look at one such sequence of uh, point z converging to z naught and then we see that g of f of z so that sequence is equal to g of f of z naught is precisely what w naught is plus f of z minus f of z naught times uh, g prime at f of z naught plus f of z minus f of z naught times e2 of f of z. Let us write it down, uh, simplify it and write it down. This means that i e g of f of z minus g of f of z naught, this is equal to f of z minus f of z naught times g prime at f of z naught plus e2 of f of z. But what was f of z minus f of z naught? We already uh, have given a characterization of this number above. We know what this is exactly equal to as you can see here. And using that, this is going to be equal to, this is going to be equal to z minus z naught times f prime at z naught plus e1 at e1 of z. That is what f of z minus f of z naught will be. And this is going to be g prime of f of z naught plus e2 of f of z. If you look at the limit as z goes to z naught where z is in omega minus z naught of g of f of z minus g of f of z naught by z minus z naught. This is precisely what we are interested in, isn't it? Then this is going to be equal to the limit. Let me keep this just above. This is uh, going to be z going to z naught of uh, f prime at z naught, which is a constant plus e1 of z times g prime at f of z naught plus e2 of f of z. Now, let us see what happens to e1 of z and e2 of z as z goes to z naught. The e1 of z uh, term uh, approaches 0 because as z goes to 0, e1 of z goes to 0 and because f is continuous as z goes to z naught, f of z goes to w naught and we know that e2 of uh, uh, z, e2 of w approaches 0 as w goes to 0 and therefore, this is equal to f prime at z naught times g prime at f of z naught and this is precisely what we had set out to prove. So, as you can see the proof is exactly like in the real variable settings. The, the proofs of the statements written above, they are also going to be exactly similar. Functions which are complex differentiable on the entire complex plane are called entire functions. So, let me just note that down, that is a special name given to functions which are complex differentiable on the entire complex plane. Functions which are complex differentiable in uh, on C on the entire complex plane are called entire functions. So, the example which I gave above, so for example, z going to z to the power n is an entire function, we just check that above, is not it? And now having all the laws of calculus for complex differentiable functions as well, we can say that uh, any polynomial in z is an entire function by using the laws of calculus above. We have p of z which is equal to say a0 plus a1z plus up to 
a d z to the power d this is also an entire function e is this one is correct also e is an entire function in fact we know explicitly what the the derivative of p at a point z not is by the laws of calculus isn't it p prime at a point z not this is going to be equal to a1 plus 2a2 times z0 plus d a d z0 to the power d minus 1. This is precisely what the derivative is going to be because we are going to use the linearity property to establish this. So, the polynomials are entire functions. More examples, uh, we also defined rational functions. So, let r of z be equal to p of z by q of z and we had noted that uh, this was defined on a set where q does not vanish on omega where q of z is not equal to 0. So, q remember that q is a polynomial and because of that it will have a degree say d and there should be less than or equal to d roots of q and therefore, uh, omega can be thought of as c minus finitely many points which is an open set. Now, q of z not equal to 0 by the quotient rule r of z is uh, a complex a holomorphic function by the quotient rule. I will slowly start using the word holomorphic when I want to talk about uh, the complex differentiability on an open set. So, the quotient rule tells us that r of z is holomorphic on omega. We have seen a few examples, let us also look at a few non-examples. Let us consider the function which is the conjugate, consider f of z being equal to z bar. We will see that this is not uh, complex differentiable at any point, so fix a point z naught. Then what will be f of z minus f of z naught? by z minus z naught. This is just going to be equal to z bar minus z naught bar by z minus z naught. So, let us take z to be z naught plus h for some complex number h. So, let z be equal to z naught plus h. Then what will happen is z bar is equal to z naught bar plus h bar and therefore f of z minus f of z naught by z minus z naught this is equal to h bar by h where h is not equal to 0. Right and as h goes to 0 z naught plus h goes to z. Uh, z naught plus h goes to z naught. So, we have we are in the right setting, right. So, limit uh, z going to z naught is going to be the same as the limit h going to 0 h bar by h. Now, let us see if this limit exists. Uh, minutes thought will tell you that based on how you approach uh, 0, this limit will have different values. So, for example, if h is uh, taking only positive, uh, only real values. Okay, let us do this. Suppose h converges to 0 along r, then h bar is equal to h and hence limit h going to 0 of h bar by h is equal to 1 because h bar is equal to h. And suppose the, this is the real axis ok. And suppose h goes to 0 along uh, i r the, the imaginary axis, then h will be something like i times x where x is a real number and what will be the conjugate of i x, i x's conjugate will just be minus i x and then 
uh, limit h going to 0 will be uh, of h bar by h will be limit of minus 1 at every stage h bar by h will be minus 1 and this is going to be minus 1 which is not the same as the limit which we obtain when we go along the real axis. At any point z0 at any point z0 on the complex plane you take you fix any z0 we can show that the limit uh, of uh, the uh, uh, ratio f of z minus f of z0 by z minus z0 does not exist. So, this is a function which does not have uh, a complex derivative at any point. Let us now consider the function uh, f of z equal to absolute value of z square. Let us see what the situation there is. This is going to be absolute value of z square as a function is just z times z bar. So, notice that there is a z bar already featuring in you should start questioning whether this will have uh, a valid uh, limit. Uh, at again let us fix a point z naught then f of z and z be equal to z naught plus h. Then f of z naught plus h this is just z naught plus h times z naught plus h bar and that is going to be equal to the absolute value of z0 square plus the absolute value of well, h h bar plus h z0 bar plus h bar z0. So, if you look at f of z0 minus uh, plus h minus f of z0 this is going to be equal to h h bar plus h z0 bar plus h bar z0 and if you look at the ratio of z f of z minus uh, f of z0 by z minus z0 z minus z0 remember is equal to h and we have this is equal to h bar plus z0 bar plus h bar by h times z0 and a similar argument as above tells us that along r along the real axis we have this converges to uh, z bar z naught bar plus z naught and along imaginary axis this converges to z naught bar minus z naught and both are equal if and only if z naught is 0. So, at any point away from uh, the origin the complex differentiability fails for this function. We will see more examples of complex differentiable functions in the form of uh, power series. Power series are those functions which are an infinite version of uh, polynomials. Uh, in the disk of uh, convergence where it, it does converge, polynomials and power series have many many similarities. So, we will look at uh, the notion of power series in the next week.